Hi, WDAPWW here. The question keeps coming up over and over again. How do I tell the difference between a D and a non-D on both the 857 and 897 radios? The front face on the 897 does not say D anywhere, so don't look for it. It's not there. Likewise, the side panel. Here's the label that says the serial number of the radio. Again, you'll see only 897 displayed, no inference toward a D. 857 is much the same way. Front face only says 857, and again, don't look for a D, it's not there. The bottom label is the same way. It does not say D on it anywhere. It has a serial number, but not anything indicating that it's a D. A little closer look. Now, one of the things you can do is you can get the serial number of the radio and you can call Yezu directly and they can tell you by serial number whether or not it is a D or a non-D. The issue is, however, that over the years, these radios now have gone through some repairs and sometimes non-Ds have actually been converted to Ds. If the boards have been swapped, it's no longer a guarantee whether it's a D or a non-D. The other question that comes up over and over again is, well, why can't I just tell by functionality? That's true if the radio has not been modified. If you take a non-D857 and do a Mars mod on it, the additional bands that were added for the D are gone. The radio transmits from 1.8 megahertz to 30 megahertz continuously. So there's no way to tell by operation if a Mars modded radio is a D or non-D, they'll both act identical. One additional thing that should be mentioned here is on the 897D, that's 897D, the TCXO oscillator clock came as a standard with that radio. It was not an option, it was standard. So if you're purchasing an 897D, it should have the optional TCXO included in the radio. On the 857s, it remained an option, but not on the 897s. So make sure that you're getting that oscillator because you're entitled to it. I bring that up because I have seen situations where customers have purchased a D and somebody has taken the TCXO out of it and sold it separately. They're quite expensive, and that happens more often than should. Okay, now that we've covered sort of the high-level view of this situation and sort of the exceptions and so forth of, of functionality, etc., let's actually dig into here we are, we want to buy an 857 or 897 and we want to know whether or not it's a D. The best way I know to do this is by actually looking at the main board. So if you're in the process of purchasing a radio from someone it's a very simple thing to remove the top cover, snap a couple of pictures, send them to you so that you can confirm what it is you're for sure purchasing. So let's dig into this and I'll show you the two physical differences that you can tell between a non-D and a D 897, 857. One thing I want to point out here is you may notice that I have been interchanging 897 and 857 freely. They're basically the same radio. The 897 has some differences on the power amplifier board that accommodates the battery setup that's in an 897. The 857 itself doesn't have any of the battery uh, feature options added to the, to the PA board. On the main board between an 857 and an 897, there's only one difference. And you can actually see it if you look at the board. In the bottom left-hand corner of the board, on an 857, which is pictured here, you can see the black connector where the microphone plugs in. On the 897, that connector is missing, and the connector, which is located just above there, you can actually see it here, the outline for it, that connector is installed in an 897, and it's cabled to the front panel, which is significantly different between the two radios. I've never attempted swapping an 857 and 897 board. I would suspect that there is a difference in the firmware. Can't confirm that one way or the other, but 
I wouldn't advise trying to make an 857 board work in an 897 or vice versa. It could be getting, it, you could get into a firmware issue with the, uh, uh, like the battery features and so forth. Okay, so let's cover the non-D version of the main board first. I've circled these two component areas on the main board itself showing you the specific things that you can look for to see if it's a D versus a non-D. So on the non-D, if you take a look at the, the area pictured here, you can see two significant differences circled in red. One is the existence of the DSP connector and switch. The other is the different style of microprocessor that's used between the two. Located on the edge of the PC board, just above the microphone connector, you can see the little black connector for the optional DSP along with the activation switch for that DSP when it's installed. The other way to tell the difference between a D and a non-D is the microprocessor itself. You can see in this video, the microprocessor is much thicker, the writing on it's much more bold, and the leads themselves are considerably taller than the D version, which we'll show you in just a minute. This is another way between the combination of the two that you can tell a D versus a non-D. So here's a D board sitting side by side with the non-D board. The D board itself has, again, the two significant differences. If you look at this picture, circled again in red, you can see the absence of the switch and the connector in the lower left-hand corner, and the different physical shape of the microprocessor, which is used on the D. The D's micro is a lower height device, not nearly as thick. The lettering graphics on the micro itself are typically not as bold as the non-D version. And overall, the micro itself has a pretty significant difference in appearance. The other thing, obviously, is the missing connector for the DSP and the switch. That's uh, pretty obvious in this video here. You can see the outline of the switch, the outline of the connector. Those are now gone. The reason for that is the DSP on the D version is actually mounted on the back side of the board. I thought since we were on the topic of the DSP, since I had the two boards out uh, for, the, for this video, so I'd show the back side of the board to show you. Here's the non-D version. You can see the footprint for the micro, but the micro is not installed. Here the D is installed. Again, here versus here. This is the actual DSP chip, which is obscured because there's a heat sink pad that uh, is glued to the top of the, the DSP uh, helps to eliminate, I, I would assume, the heat that's generated the, with the uh, DSP running. So anyway, you can't actually see the chip, you just see the silver pad that's glued to the top of the chip in this picture. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Again, if you have questions around any of this D, versus non-D functionality and so forth, to be, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, you can PM me directly uh, through the Facebook page here and uh, be happy to help you out. Uh, I do this as a hobby and as a business, but more hobby for fun than business. So anyway, uh, if you got any questions again, be sure and contact me. Uh, if there's something that you've noticed that I've said in this video that you don't agree with or you think is incorrect, you know, speak up. Thanks for watching. This is WDA BWW, seven threes for now. Bye.